In 1789, William Herschel discovered two new satellites around Saturn, Enceladus and Mimas. Since then, researchers have found that both are similar in size, have icy surfaces and orbit at roughly the same distance from Saturn. Today, thanks to the images collected by the Cassini space probe, we know that Enceladus has geysers and an essentially smooth surface. Mimas, on the other hand, is much more cratered. Enceladus's smooth surface is regularly renewed by the activity of its internal ocean and geysers. If the cratered surface of Mimas seems old and inactive, can we deduce that its interior is different from that of Enceladus? This is what an international team led by researchers from Paris Observatory has been trying to find out. To reveal the interior of Mimas, a first method is based on analyzing its rotation around its axis. Most satellites show the same face to their planet, like the Moon and the Earth. This is known as synchronous rotation. However, depending on their internal structure, in addition to this synchronous rotation, these satellites can oscillate more or less strongly around their axis of rotation. This is known as libration. In the case of Mimas, the study of its libration has led to the adoption of two models. Either the interior of Mimas is made up of a fairly large and very elongated rocky core, or there is a global internal liquid ocean beneath the satellite's surface. The first model, that of an elongated core, is interesting. Mimas would have formed much closer to Saturn, very close to the rings. The second model, that of an internal ocean, is much more surprising. If this were the case, we should have observed a smooth surface, like on Enceladus. But the surface of Mimas is cratered. How do we distinguish between the two models? The researchers began by looking at changes in the satellite's internal temperature. As on Enceladus, a sufficiently high temperature is required for an ocean to exist beneath the surface. What factors could cause this? The most likely would be the tidal effects caused by the giant Saturn. According to this hypothesis, around 50 million years ago, under the effect of gravity, Mimas was subjected to strong orbital disturbances by its neighbors Enceladus and Tethys. As a result of these interactions, the three satellites entered into orbital resonance. The attractions of Enceladus and Tethys exerted regularly and repeatedly, like pushing a swing, would have modified the orbit of Mimas. This orbit, which was originally almost circular, took on an elliptical shape. As the satellite moved towards and away from Saturn, with each revolution, internal friction would have caused the interior of Mimas to heat up abruptly. This heating would have allowed the temperature necessary for the formation of a global ocean to be reached. This valuable hypothesis does not, however, rule out an elongated core. Researchers then turned to a method that had not been yet applied to the study of the internal composition of bodies. It involves a detailed analysis of the precession of the orbital plane. Orbital precession is the rotation of a satellite's orbit around its planet. In our case, Mimas around Saturn. It can be more or less rapid, depending on the Moon's internal structure. In the case of Mimas, if the rotation is fast, this means that the interior is a global ocean. If the rotation is slow, its internal structure will be consistent with an elongated core. Using images taken by the Cassini spacecraft, the researchers were able to calculate the orbital motion of Mimas extremely accurately to within a few hundred meters. By comparing the results obtained on the basis of the two hypotheses, a large elongated core or a global ocean, the last doubts have been removed. The existence of a global internal ocean beneath the crust of Mimas is now the only scenario compatible with observation. 
Calculations have even shown that this ocean starts at a depth of between 20 and 30 kilometers. Mimas has been able to keep its craters intact because this ocean is deep and recent. Mimas joins the family of satellites with an ocean beneath their surface. In fact, it is the smallest of them all. As on Enceladus, the liquid water present under the layer of ice on Mimas offers interesting prospects for the development of extraterrestrial life. Its recent appearance shows us that conditions favorable to the development of life can occur at any time in the history of the solar system and beyond.